ACC's Access Points coming to you live after day one of the ACC. A lot of late breaking trials here. I'm joined by Rosh Alami. Welcome, Rasha. Welcome Thank you back. Very much. Welcome, Javin. Uh, well, a lot of hot stuff today, starting with the clear outcome study. There are a lot of people out there with statin intolerance, many of them women. Uh, and what we found was that, you know, if you randomize people to bempedoic acid, which is a lot like a statin, it works in the same pathway, but works higher up. Uh, it also is not metabolized in the muscles and the periphery, but in the liver with a low rate of statin intolerance. The study found in 14,000 people that you can reduce the primary endpoint of death, MI, uh, revascularization, and stroke by about 1.6% absolute percentage points. As a trialist, I like absolute yeah. risk reductions, meaning a number needed to treat of about 62. Uh, it also reduced MI. Revask, unstable angina. Uh, Russia, what do you think? Uh, well, I actually I love those results. I think this is a population of patients that are underserved at the moment. Whether it's because they have a nocebo effect or something else that's stopping them taking the statins, this is a group of patients with high cardiovascular risk. And some form of options in those patients is fantastic. It was interesting to me to see that the side effect profile was essentially identical to placebo. Um, and having an alternative to these patients is really important to me. It doesn't really matter whether it's nocebo or not. I mean, exactly. people aren't taking the drug. Yeah. And, you know, this is one of the first trials where we had 50% women and 50% men. Because many women suffer from statin intolerance, right? Absolutely. So, and what did you think, Chavit? Yeah, I mean, it's great. As you said, I mean, this is a real issue in our patients out there. The lipid field is on fire. There are so many sort of good trials coming out and gift therapies uh, that are coming out and a positive trial. Then you're really stuck and have an alternative. And it's a clearly positive trial. There are none of these sort of, you know, plus minus thing. So I think having a yet another, you know, thing in your armamentarium to treat these patients, it's great. Great. Let's talk about triluminate. A lot of patients out there with symptomatic tricuspid disease. These folks uh, were highly symptomatic, bad tricuspid disease, could not undergo surgery. Uh, they looked at a composite, a win ratio of death, needing tricuspid surgery, hospitalization for surgery, but then they used the Kansas City questionnaire. Uh, and what they found was a significant benefit in the win ratio, 1.48. That means, you know, the surgery one 1.48 times more uh, in each patient than the uh, no surgery. So pretty big reductions, most of it driven though by a reduction in the Kansas City questionnaire symptomatology. What did you think, Rasha? Yeah, so for me, I interpret these trial context with in context. I mean, I really think we have to be quite cautious about these results. Um, these are patients who predominantly the endpoint was driven by quality of life improvements. Uh, in an unblinded trial, there was no difference in terms of hospitalization for heart failure. So what kind of reduction that was, I don't really understand. This clearly wasn't episodes of fulminant right heart failure that led them to hospitalizations. It's unblinded. There are only 350 patients. It's highly likely that there would have been some placebo benefit in those patients who had um, the percutaneous intervention. So for me, it's kind of not totally uh, life-changing or practice-changing. Illuminating, but not, yeah. uh, to, uh, not practice-changing for you. Javid, what do you think? It's a heart failure specialist. So I'm actually quite excited about the results, not necessarily for these results, but what these results will mean in the future for more research. So if you think about it, these were really advanced patients, right? So you're talking about significant MR. I mean, I think only about 2% of the patient had moderate MR. So we're talking about severe to torrential MR. Uh, you have sort of this RV dysfunction, you're a high risk patient, you are unable to go through surgery. So this is sort of the the, the, the tower, uh, you know, uh, history all over again. Tower of the tricuspid. Yeah, exactly. And, and then these patients, you know, a 15 point reduction in uh, KCCQ is a really substantial improvement in quality of life. But as was mentioned, uh, in an unblinded study, you know, the quality of life, that becomes a little bit of an issue. But I think uh, that this gives us a very good reason that A, you're not having more adverse events. So that's big. And then now moving more upstream and learning from the lessons and going to, you know, not really, really very end stage patients, but a little bit earlier preventing that. My gut feeling is that we'll get to a point that more heart outcomes will improve also. And this is the first step in that direction. First big trial in the tricuspid yes, space, so absolutely. that's an advance in and of itself, mm -hmm. so doing randomized trial. 
the last study is the STOP CA study. I didn't realize, you know, how many patients out there in the U.S. have lymphoma. 90,000 patients with lymphoma getting anthracyclines. Uh, they survive, but then their cardiac cripples often with heart failure. And I, again, I was unaware that statins, you know, there's some literature suggesting statins may benefit this. Uh, they looked at the benefit of statins in preventing a reduction of the EF down by 10% and less than 55%. Found that the rates were 22% for placebo, got worse, 9% for statin. What did you think? Yeah, so I really thought this was very interesting. This is obviously a population of patients that we don't see that often, but our oncology colleagues really do. Um, and it's once again a win for statins. Um, I've often said that statins need to be put in the water, and now we've got another. Oh, you another. do that in the UK? Yeah, exactly. We need <laughs> yeah. to, along with the fluoride. It's in the grocery um, store. Exactly. Yeah. We need it. We need to give them out like Smarties. And yeah. you know, the nice guidance really has come down in terms of and widened the catchment area for statins. And maybe this is right. another indication. Right. What do you think? So I'm, I'm sort of again excited about the results uh, from a little bit of a different, you know, angle. So first of all. This is not some super expensive drug. This is Mishorvastatin. We are all used to sort of using it. Uh, you know, one can be sort of hypercritical as a trialist and say, well, what was the average difference? Oh, it was a small trial. Oh, the actual clinical development of heart failure was not that many cases. But none of that matters. At the end of the day, when your EF drops, you change the plan for chemotherapy. And the first order of business is to save our patient's life and give them the best possible chemotherapy. And if you have a substantial reduction in the risk of dropping your EF, especially by a medicine which is very common, which is not very expensive, and we're all used it to using it. It has a pretty good side effect profile. Absolutely. Uh, and then, and, and if it can just let the oncologist continue with their original plan for the best possible treatment for lymphoma, I think in that sense, it's a win. Great. Well, thank you, too. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining us here live from ACC 23 here with Access Points.